thoughts that I might endorse him. But after he avoided me when I got down there, and then he gave me two minutes in the hallway, which allowed me to ask him the real question. I said, Senator, if you lose the Democratic nomination to Secretary Clinton, will you support a third party run or will you yourself run third party? And he looked me right in the eye, absolutely, and said, absolutely not. I will support Secretary Clinton 100%. I just turned around and walked out then. I left because I thought he's deceiving the public. Bernie is. And here's what I mean by it. Bernie's not an independent. He's a Democrat. He just runs and wants that I by his name. But when push comes to shove, he's a Democrat. He's going to jump in line with the party, which is what he did. He showed me that day that, that he was going to support Hillary no matter what. And here, everything he was talking about was pretty anti what Hillary was talking about. You know, trying to get the nomination. Well, come on. You know, so I don't like the fact that Bernie calls himself an independent. He's really not. He's a Democrat who, who likes to call himself an independent. And well, which, you, go ahead. And you, are, and you are a true independent in every sense of the word. But you are also somebody that a lot of people were gravitating to in 2020, hoping that you would run on the Green Party ticket. And the reason I, I think <laughs> you are a unique individual for this particular time in history is because while I do believe we are at the point where I think there is enough juice where an, a true independent outsider could come in and actually cause a stir, potentially even pull it off. I think you, you would win. Yeah. And you are in a very unique position because you've been a mayor <laughs> and a governor. You, you are not just some, you know, person who's on the outside saying the system's broken, which it is, and I'm the one to fix it. How about the system is broken? I am from the outside. And by the way, I've actually done this before and I know what needs to be done. That's where I think you really separate yourself. And you are also somebody who does not give a flying F about what anybody else thinks. You will say whatever the hell is on your mind. And that is why people gravitated to Trump in the first place. It is. And you, on the other hand, are somebody who actually gives a damn about the American people, not just himself, like our former president. Well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. Uh, there's not much I can say that it's thank you that you feel that way. Uh, I'm honest. You know, that's the big thing out of me. I'm going to tell you what I feel and then be honest about it. Uh, yeah, I feel somewhat responsible for Trump because uh, in my own weird way, because uh, when I did win here, he immediately came here and visited me you know, and did photo ops with me and all this stuff. And at the time, I we embraced him because we were at the point we were ready to embrace anybody. You know, we wanted to start a third party movement and somebody with money like him and connections like him would be good, we thought. But then he's made a complete change of who he is. And well, he never changed who he was. Uh, you just got to be around him longer to to understand what he really is. And when I when I came to realize what he really is, then I wanted no part of him whatsoever. But no, I agree with you, I, and I say this in all seriousness: I don't have mechanism, I don't have boots on the ground. People think I have entourages. You know who my secretary is? My wife. You know, and she's getting up in years now, as we both are, to where she doesn't deserve that position anymore. She deserves retirement from it. So when I say that, I, I, you know, I'll tell you this. I'd run for president in 2024 if a couple things happened. If, if a grassroots thing out there got me ballot access in all 50 states, because that's what it would require. They make it that way. You have to jump through different hoops in every state. So you have to have boots on the ground there, people to do the signing of petitions and all the BS that goes with it because nothing is done. There's not a separate standard form to get on the ballot. Every state's different. But if I could get on the ballot in all 50 states, I pretty much guarantee I could shame them into letting me in the debates. <laughs> and I can pretty much tell you this, if I'm allowed, if I have ballot access in all 50 states and I'm allowed in the debates, 
get ready. Because that's exactly what happened in Minnesota. They didn't think I could win, and I've always been, and I conclude the Dems and Repubs under one roof here when I say this, if I can debate them, I can beat them. Just because, the, go ahead. Oh, oh, no, please finish. My apologies. Well, I, I, you know, that's how I feel about it because I don't run against the candidates. In Minnesota, I didn't. I run against the parties, and I portray the candidates. These are just puppets. These are just puppets who are controlled by the money and the party. You know, whoever they send out is a puppet. That's all they are. And so if you want a puppet, vote for them. If you want somebody real who you think will talk to you directly and has no no strings attached, vote for me. And I think that would prevail right now if you could get the ballot access and be allowed in the debates. But... You got to remember the status quo, the two parties would do everything to stop you from achieving that. Jesse, would you have uh, any objection uh, pertaining to the specific party? I mean, right now, the only two parties that really have the ability to do 50 ballot, uh, 50 state ballot access would be Libertarian and Green. I think (laughs) there's going to be a puncher's chance with Andrew Yang's forward party. Okay. Uh, What are your thoughts uh, on Andrew's, uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're friendly with Andrew. We've had him on. Uh, he endorsed Jen when she ran for Congress. I really think that he's got a lot of great ideas, but his main focus with the forward party is ranked choice voting and open primaries. Well, what are your thoughts Andrew, on the forward party? Andrew Yang's the hope. Andrew Yang is the hope out there right now because there ain't no hope with the Greens and there ain't no hope with the Libertarians. Both of them have been around long enough that they should have made an impact. Both of them have not made any impact. I dabbled with the Greens. They were horrifying. Not only were they split and fractured, it would have required me to mend the fence or attempt to, to bring them together to get focused. And then I'm supposed to do that and then turn around and face the Democrats and Republicans with a fractured party. Ain't going to happen. Ridic- That's why I dropped out when I, and, and from them, you want to know the quote I got from the greens from some of them. Is he one of us? And the number one movie in the country was called ass. But there's no better word than and that's all it was. I'm very highly educated. I know words. I have the best words. For 90 minutes. It won eight Oscars that year, including as a screenplay. And Corn Pop was a bad dude. Don't vote for ass. You deserve better.